Welcome to Mountain Bound Lives. The reason for these videos is to strengthen our faith by seeing the majesty of God revealed in the Bible. We draw near to God because we want to see His glory and we want to give Him praise. We are entering our fourth week in a series on the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6 verses 9 through 13 is foundational for our Christian walk. It ensures we ask our Heavenly Father what He desires and what we need. Last week we learned about God's kingdom. Today we will discuss the third petition mentioned in the Lord's Lord's prayer. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We will talk about the following. Where can God's will be found? What are the characteristics of God's will? And how to accomplish God's will? So where do we see God's will carried out today? We find it in heaven. Angelic beings and the redeemed people of God who have died, these fulfill God's will in heaven. These in heaven don't have a conflict of interest going on internally, causing them to pause or delay. There is no fear of man, the temptation to sin, the lust of the flesh, and the guilt from sin clouding their thinking, causing them to delay in doing God's will. Where can we find God's will demonstrated on earth? It is through the church. Jesus brought heaven to earth when he became flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw his glory. He came down from heaven not to do his own will, but the will of him who sent him. And whatever the Father does, these things the Son also does in like manner. Jesus said, He or she who believes in me, the works that I do, they will do also. Jesus Christ's life advances through his established church. The church is not a building, but the body of Christ, made of diverse groups of people, filled with one spirit, the spirit of God, and they, the church, Church, live out God's will all around the world. The only way we can live out God's will as it is in heaven is to live according to the one who brought heaven to earth. So God's will is done on earth through the body of Christ, the spirit-filled church. Now we want to take a look at the characteristics of God's will on earth. The ultimate and final will on earth and in heaven is God's, for he made everything. We know God's will to the degree he discloses it to us. He is the author of the story of life, and he determines how much information will be given to the audience. If God does not speak, we are in the dark. But he does speak, and I want to show you four things the Bible shows us are God's will. We have God's revealed will, which is told to us in the pages of the Bible. Then we have God's hidden will. Those things only God knows and out of his perfect plan in creation has chosen not to make known to us, such as when Jesus will return to earth. Also, we do not know what God has in store for each of us, such as how long we will live and how difficult or easy life will be on earth. We also find God's decreative and perceptive will. In the Bible, God's revealed will tells us of those things he alone will accomplish. This is called God's decreative will because it is based on what God decrees. We could also call this God's sovereign will. When God has decreed sovereignly that something will come to pass in time, it will indeed come to pass by his power. Things like calling the world into existence in Genesis chapter 1 and 2, establishing his kingdom rule on earth through his king, Jesus Christ, through his covenant, redeeming a people and establishing a family for himself. And one day he will send Jesus Christ back to earth and make all things new. God's decreative will accomplishes all of it, and it cannot be resisted. And within God's revealed will found in the Bible, we have his perceptive will. That is, God reveals his precepts, his teaching, or you could say his law. God's perceptive will can be resisted, and it is resisted all the time. The Ten Commandments and the Sermon on the Mount reveal God's perceptive will to us. Some of you may be wondering about people's will on earth. All people have free will. There are, however, two dispositions a person can have when they make a choice. The Bible talks metaphorically about people receiving a new heart and spirit. Ezekiel 36 says, The Lord will give a new heart and put a new spirit within his people. He will remove the heart of stone from their flesh and give them a heart of flesh. He will put his spirit within them and cause them to walk in his statues. The heart and the spirit are the location of a person's thoughts and the will that underlines their actions. So although we all make free will, choices, we make them based on the condition of our hearts. Those with a new heart and spirit recognize God's will as wise for living. And hearts of stone cannot see or make sense of believing in the Bible as God's infallible word to us. Jesus, when talking privately with his disciples, said, referring to the crowds that were listening to him, that while seeing they do not see, and while hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. For the hearts of this people have become dull. All people make free will choices based on the disposition of their heart's affections. We have discussed where we can find God's will lived out and the characteristics of God's will. Now we want to look at how the church can continually accomplish and carry out God's will. First, we must have a new heart and new spirit. 
Does our conscience bear witness and our thoughts defend the teachings about Jesus found in the Bible? Do we want to follow Jesus? If we confess with our mouths Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we are saved and we have a new heart and spirit. We now can put into practice God's revealed perceptive will for us. The Bible guides us to exercise four essential disciplines. One, we continually renew our minds. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says, Not to be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds so that we may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. We allow the word of God to anchor us to God's will, guide us along paths of righteousness, and lighten our plans, desires, and goals for life. We allow the Bible to remind us who we are in Christ Jesus, how much God loves us, how many of his promises are given to us, and his commitment to see us through life to the end. Second, we continually pray. We pray to God for ourselves to fulfill his will on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus Jesus prayed to his father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Jesus stated to his father through prayer that even though his human desire was not to die, he knew how to please his father by declaring, not my will be done, but yours. We also pray for one another. Paul continued to pray for Christians to be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that they would walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, to please him in all respects, bearing fruit in every good work. How would it make you feel if you knew people were praying for you to be filled with the knowledge of God's will? So we pray and keep praying until the day when the earth is full of the knowledge of the Lord. God's name is hallowed, his kingdom has come, and his will is done all over the earth as it is in heaven. Third, we confess our sins. We lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Sin clouds our judgment. Sins we protect, keep hidden, and have habitually act upon without confessing as evil will lead us into further darkness. We cannot see, let alone fulfill God's will on earth, if sins are not confessed and turned away from. And fourth, we fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. People in the Bible and people we know now can inspire us. Nevertheless, Jesus Christ is the highest encouragement and supreme example to strengthen our faith. So we continually renew our minds by reading the Bible, praying without ceasing, confessing our sins, and focusing on Jesus Christ. In conclusion, God's will can be found in heaven through the lives of angelic beings and on earth through the Spirit-filled church which is the extension of Jesus Christ's life. The characteristics of God's will are revealed to us through the pages of his word, the Bible. There are those things the Lord will accomplish and tasks the church will pursue. And we learn some events in history are hidden from us. And we accomplish and fulfill God's will each day by reminding ourselves of what is true, right, and sound. We pray without ceasing, bring into the light our sins, and keep looking to Jesus Christ for guidance. And in the end, what is the will of God? It is the final ground of everything, of all existence. It is the final explanation of everything that has happened or everything that will happen. And the Bible teaches that the will of God is sovereign. In other words, it is not determined by anything but by God himself. It is the expression of his lordship, his absolute being. God from all eternity did by his most wise and holy counsel of his own will, freely and unchangeably ordained whatever comes to pass. May we then seek God with our understanding of him and trust in Jesus, for he is not far from each one of us. So we can say with sincerity of heart, I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. Today we talked about God's will being done on earth as it is in heaven. What else do we learn in the Lord's Prayer? We will answer this question in our next video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Click the link to watch last week's video. Until then, take some time today to pray to our Heavenly Father Father and ask him to bring his will in our lives on earth as it is in heaven. And I'll see you in the next video.